Muhammad ordered his followers to execute people for making fun of him. Fourteen centuries later, people are still being executed for making fun of him. Oddly enough, politicians and journalists simply can't see the connection between Muhammad ordering his followers to execute critics and his followers obeying his order to execute critics. So it looks like we're on our own in dealing with the Islamic death penalty for making fun of Muhammad. The French satirical magazine Charlie Hebdo paid a heavy price for standing up for freedom of speech. In 2015, jihadis opened fire at the magazine's Paris headquarters, killing a dozen people and wounding 11 more. The gunmen were killed two days later. But now, in 2020, 14 people charged as accomplices are on trial. The New York Times reports. Charlie Hebdo republishes cartoons that prompted deadly 2015 attack. The decision by the French satirical magazine to recirculate cartoons about the Prophet Muhammad, always good to see the New York Times affirming the prophethood of Muhammad, and Islam coincides with the start of a long-awaited trial for the attack that killed 11 of its staff. The French satirical magazine Charlie Hebdo has republished the same cartoons about the Prophet Muhammad and Islam that prompted a deadly attack on the magazine in 2015, an act that will be seen by some as a commitment to free speech and by others as reckless provocation. Seems like a bit of both. You can recklessly provoke out of a commitment to free speech. The publication coincides with the start on Wednesday of the long-awaited terrorism trial of people accused as accomplices in the attack, potentially cathartic for a nation that was deeply scarred by that act of brutality. The magazine posted the cartoons online on Tuesday, and they will appear in print on Wednesday. Charlie Hebdo's editors wrote in the new issue that it was unacceptable to start the trial without showing the pieces of evidence to readers and citizens. Not republishing the caricatures would have amounted to political or journalistic cowardice, they added. Do we want to live in a country that claims to be a great democracy, free and modern, which, at the same time, does not affirm its most profound convictions? That is the question of our generation. Western civilization says we're free to criticize the teachings of an illiterate 7th century caravan robber who calls for our violent subjugation. Sharia says we're not free to criticize the teachings of an illiterate 7th century caravan robber who calls for our violent subjugation. For some reason, Western leaders keep trying to move in the direction of Sharia, while those who remain firm in their commitment to freedom of expression are massacred by jihadis, or at least deplatformed by Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. The attack on Charlie Hebdo was the first of a string of major Islamist attacks on Paris. On January 7, 2015, two French-born brothers of Algerian descent, Saeed and Sharif Kouachi, stormed the offices of Charlie Hebdo. They killed 11 people inside with automatic gunfire, including the top editor and some of its leading cartoonists, then killed a police officer on the street as they made their getaway. Several people were wounded. The brothers identified themselves as belonging to Al-Qaeda and left the magazine stating that they were avenging the Prophet, according to survivors of the attack. Two days later, a friend of theirs, Amadi Koulibaly, took hostages and killed four people at a kosher supermarket in Paris. The worst of the assaults came ten months later, when a group of Islamic State gunmen and suicide bombers killed 130 people and injured more than 400 at multiple sites across the capital region. Mr. Koulibaly and the Kouachi brothers were killed in standoffs with the police, so after nearly six years, the trial of suspected accomplices, which is scheduled to last two months, will mark the most complete airing of an incident that became a national trauma. The defendants, including some who are not in custody and will be tried in absentia, are charged with aiding the three main attackers, including some who provided weapons and financing. Seems like there were a lot of jihadis involved in these attacks. Does there come a point when we finally decide to examine and expose the ideology that convinced them that they have to slaughter people in the name of Allah? Does there come a point when we go to the real source of these attacks? 
Of course not. If we examine the ideology, we'll find that Muhammad ordered his followers to execute critics, and that he promoted terrorism. So the only way to deal with the source of the problem would be to criticize Muhammad and to show that he's not a true prophet. But according to our leaders, that would be racist and Islamophobic. We don't want to be racist and Islamophobic, so instead of criticizing Muhammad, we'll praise him. We'll praise an illiterate 7th century caravan robber who calls for our violent subjugation and for the annihilation of our civilization. We'll defend Muhammad. We'll promote Muhammad. We'll always call him prophet, right, New York Times? And thus, we'll help provide the fertile soil from which will grow the next crop of jihadis slaughtering us in the name of Allah. Imagine how much future violence we could prevent if we simply realized that it's not racist and Islamophobic to criticize an illiterate 7th century caravan robber who calls for our violent subjugation. It's good and right and moral and honorable to criticize an illiterate 7th century caravan robber who calls for our violent subjugation. It's not bad, it's good. Imagine how much violence and bloodshed we could prevent if we just realized that.